This video is sponsored by World of Warships. Coming up! With the Soviet Union getting desperate to stop Hitler's advance in the East, a groundbreaking new type of unit was formed. In this video, we will take a look at a legendary fighter group that would have a major impact on the war, made up entirely of young females. Despite being given outdated equipment and obsolete aircraft, this remarkable group of women found a way to be so deadly to German forces that they would earn the notorious nickname of the Night Witches. Before we get started, I would like to thank World of Warships for sponsoring this video. In case you guys don't know, World of Warships is a free-to-play naval combat game available for PC. It puts you right in the action on the open seas with stunning graphics and an unmatched level of realism. The battles are team-based and require different strategies and tactics to win, so it always keeps you critically thinking and looking for a new way to get an edge on the enemy. On top of all that, the game has over 400 historical ships that are available to control on the beautiful living landscapes that feature changing weather and situations. If you haven't already, join the 44 million players already online and download World of Warships to get into battle today. When you sign up, make sure to use code BOOM to support TJ3 history. This will also get you a ton of free stuff for the game, including the USS St. Louis and the SMS Emden. So use the link in the description below to get started. In addition, I will be streaming World of Warships on Twitch next Thursday, October 21st, so sign up today so you can play live with me. Without further ado, enjoy. In the summer of 1941, the Soviet Union was not faring well in the fight against German forces. Hitler and his army were making significant progress in their invasion of the Soviet Union in the east and were pushing through to Moscow. To make matters worse, the Red Army was beginning to falter both in resources and in spirit, thanks to the massive casualties that they had received. In short, the Soviet Union was running out of options. That said, the idea of bringing women into the fight was still out of the question. Women were banned from serving in combat, although they were allowed to assist in various support roles, but fighting on the front lines was strictly forbidden. The idea of an all-female flying squadron was first brought into reality by Marina Roskova, a pilot known as the Soviet Amelia Earhart. She was famous for being the first female navigator in the Soviet Air Force, as well as her numerous long-distance flight records. Throughout the duration of the war, women across the country would send Roskova letters praising her and musing about how they wanted to join the war effort like she did. Although women were allowed to fly in the forces for support roles, they were banned from being gunners or pilots that could fly on their own. These women had been forced to watch their loved ones go to war and their villages flatten to ash. They no longer wanted to sit by and watch idly. They wanted to instead join the fight. Roskova picked up on their determination and saw an opportunity to present the idea to the Soviet Union's own Joseph Stalin. Noting Roskova's rank and reputation, he approved her idea on October 8, 1941, and allowed her to form the Red Army's first female fighting squadron. After receiving over 2,000 applications for the squadron, Roskova picked a group of 400 women to form the three units of the 588th Squadron. The women were young, aged between 17 and 26, and many were students. Their equipment was also questionable at best. The Red Army did not have time nor the budget to prepare for women pilots, so they were issued used men's uniforms, including boots that were so oversized that many of the pilots had to stuff them with torn bed sheets to get them to stay on properly. When it came to their planes, that was another problem in and of itself. Their unit was given PO2 biplanes that were made out of plywood and canvas in the 1920s. Before the squadron's use, these planes were primarily used as crop dusters and training vehicles. These two-seaters were never meant to be used in combat, which was evident from the open cockpits that left the pilots vulnerable, both to enemy attacks and the harsh elements. Another issue with these coffin-like planes was their limited weight capacity. The planes were not able to have any extra weight added, which prevented them from having basic amenities like guns and radios. The squadron could not even afford to carry the extra weight of parachutes until 1944. The recruits were thrown into a rushed training course, which immediately saw them trained as pilots, navigators, maintenance, and ground crew. 
The 588th Squadron was effectively expected to master skills and information in just a few months that took most soldiers years to fully understand. In addition to harsh training conditions, the women were forced to deal with harassment, demeaning attitudes, and an overall invalidation from their male counterparts, many of which believed their units to be pointless. Finally, the planes were fitted with two small bombs at a time, a far lighter load than most of the other planes in the war, but it was better than nothing. The addition of these bombs caused the already slow planes to fly at a slower speed and lower altitude than was normally recommended. This made them easy targets for anti-aircraft fire and enemy fighters in the air. The slow biplanes were easy prey for the deadly German BF-109s. In an effort to combat this, while being efficient with their time and resources, the squadron opted to attack at night instead. The regiment had 42-person units to participate in these night raids. They were expected to complete between 8 and 18 missions every night, and they had to work through rigorous conditions which called for them to fly back and forth to rearm their aircraft after each run. This unit developed a devastatingly efficient attack method during their night raids. The squadron would fly in groups and acted in phases. First, one plane would fly into enemy territory acting as bait. This would cause the Germans to shine their spotlights on the plane, illuminating it and the surrounding area, something that was vital for the squadron's success. Immediately after this, the other planes would cut their throttle so they could move quietly and undetected behind them. They would then glide through the night air and release their bombs over the target. These tactics were deadly and wreaked havoc on German forces time and time again. Soon enough, the 588th Squadron's reputation preceded itself. Night attacks that were this deadly and this quiet were uncommon. In addition, there is a certain level of mental strain that came with being attacked at night and helped make these missions even more effective. Enemy soldiers were unnerved by the squadron's tactics and gave their group the name Night Witches after the distinct sounds that their gliding planes would make cutting through the air when they idled their engines for attack. They believed that this sounded like witches flying on their brooms in the night sky. German forces were so fearful of this squadron that any German pilot who shot down one of the Night Witch's planes would automatically be awarded the Iron Cross Medal, a high award in the Luftwaffe. Throughout the rest of World War II, the Night Witch's group became a crucial part of the Soviet Union's Red Army. Their squadron would go on to fly over 30,000 missions in the war. In total, the female unit lost 30 pilots over the course of the conflict, and 24 of the Night Witch's members were given the title Hero of the Soviet Union. Over time, the unit grew to become one of the most highly decorated units in the Soviet Air Force in World War II. But this did not stop the Night Witches from being disbanded just six months after the war ended. They were also not allowed to participate in the Victory Day Parade held in Moscow after the war ended due to the slow speed of their aircraft. Marina Roskova ultimately died on January 4th of 1943 after being sent to the front lines. At the time of her death, she was one of the most impactful women in World War II and was given a state funeral after her passing. Her ashes are still buried in the Kremlin to this day and the legacy of the Night Witches lives on as one of history's most unique and inspiring stories. I hope you enjoyed this historical recreation. Please make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my content and get awesome bonus videos, please check out the Patreon link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.